Welcome back to Mr. Orr's Flip Classroom for Grammar. Today we're going to look at finding the simple subject when the sentence is atypical or it seems to be in an un unusual order. A learning targets. I can, I can define inverted sentences, here and there sentences, questions, and imperative sentences. And I can identify the simple subject in each of those examples. First definition. An inverted sentence. This is where all or part of the predicate, usually the verb or the object of the verb, comes before the subject. We'll see an example of this shortly. Here are their sentences. This is the type of inverted sentence. Here are their sentences will refer to sentences that begin with the word here or begin with the word there, such as here is and there are. A question in the category of obvious, but let's make sure we understand this fits this idea of finding a subject in an unusual order. In a question, it's inverted because the subject is either after the verb or between the helping verb and the main verb. And of course, imperatives are subjects in unusual order because the simple subject literally is not written in the sentence. It's you understood. That's the simple subject of an imperative sentence. How do we find this? Number one, always find the verb, all parts of it. Because you find one doesn't mean you're done. This is absolutely critical in this particular lesson. You can't just look for the noun and find it and say that's a simple subject because it's in the front of the sentence. You have to find the verb first. Number two, obviously we're finding the simple subject, but the key part is the is in parentheses here. You need to ask who or what verb. The verb is walked. Who or what walked? Also make a note in that here and there are never the simple subject of a sentence. So if it's here is something, is going to be a linking verb. The simple subject is on the other side of the is. If you can't find the simple subject at all, there's a good chance it's you understood. That's the you in parentheses. This is an imperative sentence. If the sentence is inverted, the simple idea to do is put it in the most familiar form, which is rewrite the subject, verb, object, or subject, verb, everything else pattern. If you make that into a declarative, finding a simple subject is going to be much easier to understand. First example, are you planning to attend the dance? So we follow our steps. Looks like we have planning to attend. We'll come back to that later on as a type of a verb where it's not actually a verb. Planning is the main verb. Is there any helping verb? Yes, R is in front of that. So, if you're not sure about it, we can always go back to the, well, make it a statement. Are you planning to attend the dance? As a declarative sentence, it's you are planning to attend the dance. Notice how the R and the U at the front of the sentence switch places. In a question, again, oftentimes we'll have helping verb, simple subject, main verb. But when we write as a declarative, we want to have simple subject, verb, phrase, everything else. So the verb again is are planning, who are planning, you are planning, and that's a simple subject. Next, down came the savage storm on the Spanish galleon. This is a sentence I borrowed from another source. A galleon is a type of ocean-going vessel. So the question is, what's the verb? Right, came. Came is the verb. So the question is, who or what came? Down didn't come, so we have to go through and say what came down. Well, move it around if you need to. Read that sentence. What came down? The savage storm came down on the Spanish galleon. So the savage storm is our, is our complete subject. Which of the words most important? Storm. So a storm is a simple subject. The answer is not Spanish, it's not galleon. That's part of the prepositional phrase following the word on. Again, if the noun or pronoun comes after an on, or to, or from, or with, that's not going to be a simple subject. Next example. There are many reasons for this. Remember, we already talked about how there can't be your simple subject. So what's our verb? We know we're looking at are. Some people want to go ahead and rewrite the sentence with there is the last word. Some folks find this really confusing, especially if there's multiple pronouns. But in this example, the sentence would read, many reasons for this are there. Like I said, some folks find it a little more confusing. The key to look at is this. If we know there is not a simple subject, it has to be on the other side of the linking verb. So we have many reasons for and this. So what's the one word that's more important than anything else there? If we think it might be this, we recognize that this comes after for. Again, preposition. That noun or pronoun comes after preposition. It's not your simple subject. So we can cross up for this. 
You have to choose many or reasons. Many is actually describing reasons, so reasons is your simple subject. This is a lesson where you definitely want to make sure you take your time and do the work in class. You might even ask the teacher to go over all the examples that you are required to do at the conclusion of your practice time to make sure you're understanding correctly. And then possibly have more time for questions or make some notes, do some extra practice tonight, and bring those questions to class the next time you meet. In any event, good hunting.